to be or to start in the direction to get on the right path. You know, when you say that, he only surpassed his mentor in money, not common right. sense, not logic. Gotcha. Gotcha. So let's just say I'm your mentor or, or you're my mentor, however it go. And one of us surpasses the other and is acting like a jackass. Would you want to have a conversation with me? I think, I think yeah, it's just my personal opinion. I think Jay Z <laughs> is at a place right now where he's he's watching his little dude go through a whole bunch of shit that he brought upon himself. True. So being his mentor, he wants to have that conversation with him, even though he may never have it. Mm -hmm. He wants to have that conversation. Because anytime you have someone that has been in your life and you look at them as your little brother, mm -hmm. and that's basically how Jay-Z has described Kanye, <laughs> of course you only want to see them do well. Right. But when you start seeing them go through the self-inflicted wounds and battle scars and again, going down that wrong direction, a part of you is like, damn, I wish I could say something. Mm. Damn, I want to help my little brother. But he's not going to reach out to Kanye. He's just not. And it's not so much a part of an ego thing. It's like, again, he's too far and gone. when you have someone in that position who's so far gone, meaning he feels no one can tell him anything. Back when Jay was his, his mentor, those days are long gone. Yeah, I agree. So Jay could, again, he could call him up and say, Hey, me and you, let's, let's sit down and have a talk. And Jay could go through a whole list of things that he's doing wrong and tell him how to correct those situations, mm -hmm. but he's not going to listen. Right. So that's why Jay is like, I'm not going to waste my time with you. Yeah. My heart goes out to you because I still see you as that young cat came up underneath me. I'm happy to see you where you're at, meaning from a financial standpoint, you way past what my ex or expectations were for you. Right. But mentally, you're nowhere near where you should be because you can't handle the responsibility of the type of power you got. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, but because uh, like. If I was in Jay Z's shoes, I I wouldn't have anything to say to him. Um, I think if I was in Jay Z's shoes, I would wish him the best and just wipe my hands at the situation. That's just me because if you came up w under me or whatever, I was your mentor, or whatever the case may be. I did not, you did not come up behind me in an env environment that was like that. What you're doing is toxic. And if you've been doing this for the last <clears throat> 10 years or whatever, 10, 12 years, and you keep every time you turn around, you, you, you just outperforming all of your other antics. It's like, dude, like, when do you stop? Like, at what point do you sit back and be like, yo, I need to chill? Because, right, who can say something to him? <laughs> Like, I, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. So buying this house across the street from this ex, I'm like, it's sad, man. It's real sad. <laughs> it's pathetic. Yeah. Actually, it's it's bad, sad. It's pathetic. Yeah, very. Like, where's your self-respect at, man? Yeah, that part right there. As a man, your dignity as a man. I, 
Yeah, damn money can't buy happiness, bro. <laughs> damn, for some people, <laughs> it, it can buy you some 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 happy moments, but Shit. your overall mental happiness. No, that's know, something man. you gotta discover on your own. Yeah, some people just yeah, some people just too far gone with it, and that shit goes yeah. to their head. So, whatever. Yeah. So threatening deal, you. <sighs> so do you do you know know any of the backstory on that? No, I I never did even get into it. So DL Hughley, um. If, if I'm quoting the right segment of this interview, um, Dale Hughley was on Vlad TV. And pretty much what DL said, again, if I'm quoting the right part of the interview, DL Hughley said if Kim Kardashian was his daughter or something like that, he would say, he would say something to Kanye West. And I get it. Um, again, as if I'm quoting the right part of the video. My thing about that is, as a father, my son, my daughter's out here in the world, and they're 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 over this person that they was in a relationship with, and this person keeps bothering them. I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna have a problem with it. And it's going to get handled because you're not going to keep harassing my child. I don't care that y'all been married. I don't care that y'all had kids together. The fact that it's over, let it be over. Because the way, the, the you know, the way <clears throat> I look at it, the way DL looked at it, the way a lot of people look at it is stuff like this it, it is, is how people get hurt. You know, you're stalking this woman. You're doing all this. You're doing all that. And we all know far too often stuff like that turns deadly or violent. You know, we don't know this man's mental state. So now it gets to the point where Kanye is 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 throwing out D.L. Hughley's address, um, talking about I have enough money to hurt you. Um, posting video, the video of him, of DL Hughley passing out on stage when he got COVID. Um, talking about he's a pawn and this, that, and the other. And it's like, DL Hughley did not say anything directly to Kanye to put him in his feelings. He just spoke from a real place. So for me, I, I don't think DL Hughley is the type of dude that Kanye wants to play with like that, so to speak. That's where I stand on that one. Here's my my thing, right? I like DL Hughley. He he has a very vast audience. He's one of the people who actually do speak out on certain issues. Mm -hmm. So I tip my hat to him. I think in this particular situation, he was, again, just giving his personal thoughts on the situation and speaking as a father. So I don't think he was wrong about that. I do think that Kanye did get in his feelings um, about it because he felt like pretty much everybody's against him right now. <laughs> he, he's not far from the truth with that. Like, again, you, you he's really putting himself in a position where it's hard for anyone other than his fans to take his side. Right. Yeah. So threatening deal is is not a good look. Again, like you were saying earlier, one of his fans could take that as Kanye spoke to me, told me, told me to right. do something to deal. 
So, so it's one of those things like he's really, he's being very reckless mm -hmm. because you're putting this man's life in jeopardy. You put his address out there. Like, come on, because he has an opinion, because he has an opinion. Like everybody in the freaking planet has an opinion right now. <laughs> Anybody that knows you, everybody got their own opinion and they're entitled to that. You don't have to agree with it, but it is what it is. So again, I think that, you know, he's totally in the wrong about that. Yeah. Leave DL alone. You know, he, he's no different than any other, you know, radio personality or, um, person from enter the entertainment world. He's just basically stating an opinion. It is what it is. Who cares how much money you got? Yes, you you, you can drop a bag now. Ain't no lying about yeah. that shit. You can drop a bag. Yeah. But there's going to be an investigation behind that bag too. Mm -hmm. So him, you know, using his influence and his voice like that's very reckless very reckless and really not smart at all but I, I hope he leaves that situation alone let me let me tell you what I find fun about that though we all know Willie D from the ghetto boys yes sir what I find funny is Willie D had commented on a couple of Kanye situations. I bet he won't threaten Willie D. Yeah, he knows who to play with him. Not play <laughs> exactly. With. <laughs> Shit. Exactly. I bet he won't fix his Twitter fingers, Instagram fingers, or his mouth, or a video to threaten Willie D. I bet he will not do that. No, I bet no. he won't do that because Willie D ain't no Twitter gangster. I, I think Willie D will put some hands on him. It's not even so much as that. I just think that Willie D comes from that environment where he doesn't have to say anything. He doesn't even have to give a certain look. Like there are people in his circle. I put it to you like that. And within his circle, that would just go. And do what they do. Or or even like you said, he know who to play with. And and Willie D is not one of them people to play with. Yeah. Because Willie D is a man of his principles. Um and and he don't play them games. You just mm -hmm. like you don't play with people like that. Just no. just because you know you again, you know who to play with. Right. Well, but anyway, going back to the George Bush thing, oh, Lord. I'm going to put it to you like this. Oh, Lord. Here we go with this. My thing is this. Whether it's a natural disaster, our country being attacked, or whatever the case may be, you're still the president of the country, not just certain parts of it. So oh, whether, again, whether it's a natural thing or an unnatural thing. People look to you for leadership. And I just don't see, I didn't see the leadership there. Tomato, tomato. I, 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 at the end of the day, when it comes to that, because that's a totally different conversation, I just think Kanye's statement was bullshit. That's where I stand on that because that's what it was about. So, the statement was bullshit, um, and, and and that's relatable to this conversation. That part that you're talking about, that's a whole different conversation. Um, I just don't want that to get mixed up with the fact that what Kanye said was bullshit. That's just where I'm standing on that one. Whether he should have showed up or how long it took, totally different conversation. We can, we can do our research on, on, on incidents, natural disasters, or whatever the case may be, and see 
what presidents showed up and how long they took to show up, we can do that. But for this, Kanye's statement was bullshit. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> Green or red. <laughs> uh, but uh, once again, man, we just want to thank everybody for tuning in to the King and Our Life podcast. <sighs> Again, you guys can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of your major podcast platforms. And we are here in the podcast streets. And we just want to thank you guys for continuing to tune in. What you got, Soul Touch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you check in with us every second and fourth Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time for our lives. Um, we cooking up some things for you. Uh, I don't know what date this part of the episode is going to air, but, you know, stay tuned because we got some stuff coming. Uh, so, yeah, hit the website, www.kingandilife.com. Links to all of us, and like Sun Solex said, we are out there. So, oh, make sure you check us out on other platforms like Red Lipstick Vibes Podcast and stuff like that. Because you know we out here connecting and politicking, like you know, like we doing. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> we out here. We out here in these podcast streets. Dang. Yes, we are. But <laughs> until next time, it's the King and I Life Podcast. Deuces to the truces. And we out. <laughs>